Hey everybody, what is up and welcome back to the channel. And today we are gonna do a follow-up video on the Black Bunker BM8. Now I've had this gun since January is when I got it. Like January 17th is when I put up the first review of it. So going on almost six months now, I've had this gun five, we're, we're in five, six months, six months now, like six months, over six months by the time you guys see this video. Anyway, um, one of the things I wanted to do is I wanted to showcase this gun shooting it with a scope. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to show you how accurate it is with the scope on it. If you guys haven't seen my other videos, go back and check it. Because the first videos I did was shooting with the open sights. And the gun did really, really well with the open sights. So I was really impressed with that. And then I said I was going to do another video with it scoped up. So you guys could see how accurate it was with the scope. <coughs> and I think you're going to be pre pretty pleasantly surprised at how accurate we're getting out to 30 yards with a scope on it. Now, with that being said, there are a few issues that have come up since i well not really a few basically two things that we need to discuss um when it comes to this gun that i've learned since having it and shooting it for so long because i really have been shooting it i bought this gun on the basis of um you know it's it's gonna be a cool little collapsible throw in the truck gun that you know is a you know it's 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 literally um it's literally promoted and, and advertised as a survival gun. And I want to talk about that situation because um, for me, I wanted to be able to just not have a scope on this gun, shoot it with the open sights, and it shoots really accurately with the open sights. But there is an issue with that. Now, um, I don't know if I want to tell you guys the issue about that now or tell you in the end. So let's wait until the end. Let's show you how accurate this thing shoots with a scope on it first. We're gonna shoot a paper target, then we're gonna shoot some steel targets, and then I'm gonna tell you um, the pros and cons, um, the 100% pros and cons that I've learned over six months of owning this gun, or, or actually, like I said, I've owned it since January 17th, so this you guys are gonna see this video sometime in June or July, probably. Um, but um, I wanna talk about you know the pros and cons of this gun, and maybe this will help you guys even have a better informed decision of whether you like this gun. Because for me, I wanted to not have to run a scope on it and shoot it, and that's how I wanted to run it. Because if you're collapsing this and uncollapsing it and collapsing it and stuff and doing that, number one, this doesn't fit in that cool little box they send you if you have a scope on it. Number two, you don't wanna be taking your scope on and off every time you're, you're carrying around. And number three, if you're folding it up and tossing it, you could bang your scope and knock it out of alignment. So it, it, the scope will be off when you go to shoot it. So that is an issue, but we're going to show you how accurate it is with a scope on it, because I told you guys we're going to do that. And we're going to do that. We're going to shoot a few steel targets. We're going to shoot from 16 yards out to 27 yards on the steel, which is what this gun is supposed to be for is taking small game in a survival situation. And we're going to show you how well it does with that. And then we're going to Get to the end of this and we're going to wrap it up and i'm going to give you my thoughts and tell you what i think now after owning it for for a long time and just my bottom line um decision of what i think for you guys as far as you know whether this is worth getting or it's not worth getting i will tell you what i think but ultimately it's up to you so let's get to the shooting let's show you how accurate this thing shoots and show you how accurate it's still shooting after having for so long and putting a lot of tens of pellets through this thing um, and showing you that it's still holding up okay so let's get to the shooting all right guys so we're going to give this a whirl we're shooting at 30 yards jsb 1813 grain pellets we are using this is a center point um, 3 by 12 by 44 with side uh, adjustable focus um, and we're gonna see what kind of group we can shoot um, I wanted to do this first so uh, we can get to all the talking points and things of this but I said I was gonna do a, a video with this with the scope on it so you guys could see how accurate it was with the scope um, 30 yards that's what we're shooting so let's see what we can do let me uh, make sure I'm nice and focused in there and let's see what kind of shot group we can get five shots
right. There's a five shot group. That looks really, really good. Let's go get that and show you guys how well we shot it. All right, guys, here's my shot group at 30 yards with the Black Bunker BM8, and that's pretty sweet if I do say so myself. Pretty sure that's all in this one inch coin group, which it is. It's all, that's a one inch MOA coin right there. That's my Bravo Basset coin. If you guys are interested in getting one, leave a comment down below. I'll tell you how to do it. But anyway, that's all in a one inch group at 30 yards. I will put it up here as well so you guys can see it. But that is some really tight groups at 30 yards with this gun. This gun is $269 or $279. Um, I can't remember. I'll pop it up there for you too. But um, with a scope, that is really, really, really good. So that is really awesome. That's some really great group, one inch group, right where I was aiming at the whole time. Um, you can see that coin covers all of that. Um, just really, really nice tight shooting. So uh, let's get to shooting some steel targets. All right, guys. So I'm going to shoot a couple steel targets for you. I am going to shoot a prairie dog, a squirrel, and a rabbit. Today for you guys, the prairie dog is at, he's at 16 yards, squirrel is at 21 yards, and my rabbit is at 27 yards. So let's see how well I do with this gun, because this is the practical app, the practical um, purpose for this gun is uh, to be able to take small game. And so that's what we're shooting at is some small game targets. So we're gonna do the prairie dog first. And then we're going to move over to, and the prairie dog I said was at 16 yards. And bam. There's a the prairie dog for dinner. Let's uh, try to shoot it back up. <laughs> Always say try. Sometimes this prairie dog gives me a fit. All right, prairie dog's up. Let's go to the squirrel. Um, squirrel was at, I think, 21, but let's relaze it for you guys. So yeah, squirrel's at 21 yards. Let's see what we can do with the squirrel. Let's get him in focus. All right. All right, squirrel is down. Oh wait, I didn't. <laughs> I gotta go over there and move over. I didn't move my camera over for the squirrel. So let's get over to the squirrel. Sorry about that, guys. Let's redo that squirrel. Let's zoom him in a little more. And then I'm gonna shoot him back up real quick and I will put him back down for you. <laughs> Whoops, that's my fault. So let me, uh, See if I can. I gotta shoot over a dirt mound, so hopefully I can. I can back up. All right. So let's shoot the squirrel down again. The squirrel is at 21 yards. <laughs> and let's see if we can knock him back down since we just did that. All right, squirrel is down. Let's shoot the squirrel back up. Okay. Let's focus in. Squirrel's up. All right. So now we're going to move to the bunny. The bunny is out there. Let's see if I can come in a little bit for you guys so you guys can see the bunny from here. Zoom in on the bunny a little more. I think that's the best I got for zoom on the bunny. Come on, Mr. Bunny. So there we are on bunny. Hopefully I don't bump this while I'm taking this shot. Because I don't want to knock the camera at all. So let's get a focus on our bunny. Headshot. Mr. Bunny is down. All right. One more. Got 
gotta shoot them in the in the belly there. Then you pop back up. There he is, there he's up. Alright. So in the bunnies at 27 yards. If I didn't say that already, bunnies at 27 yards. I'll re-zap them real quick for you guys too. Yep, 27 yards is where the bunny's at. So there you guys go. So let's wrap this up. All right, guys. So we are wrapping this video up in my fishing, hunting, man cave, whatever you want to call it thing, because the video footage I shot outside, somehow I lost the last clip that was the ending of this. So we're shooting this in here because it's dark outside. And I want to wrap this video up for you guys. So in conclusion, like I said, I've owned this gun since January. First video went out January 17th. So going on six months now. Um, and it's been a good gun as far as it shoots really well. It's very accurate. As you guys saw, 30 yards, one inch group, you know, hitting those steel targets just fine, you know, from 16 to 27 yards. So it is definitely a viable small game hunter. So in that capacity as a survival rifle, it will work really well. It does really well. It, I think it's going to be able to go out even further. I think 40 yards, you're going to be able to just tag things. Maybe in 50, I don't know. We'll have to see and hopefully some other guys will test that out. But there are some issues with the gun that need to be addressed. And one of them is the sight. This sight right here, um, when I bought this gun, I bought it wanting to not put a scope on it. I wanted to be able to just use the open sights and shoot it. Now, for the first two weeks, it shot just fine and held true. But after that, the sight, the rear sight started to drift. And so what happens is when that spring goes forward, it's creating enough shock that it's causing that sight to, to unalign itself. You either go left or right, depending on it is. And this nut that holds it right here, it's right here. I can literally turn that just with my fingernail. It's very, it's way too easy to turn. You can just stick my finger in there and I can twist it right now and stuff, which is not good. So because of the, the shock of a spring, or, and this is actually a gas ram, not even a spring. This is a, uh, a nitro piston or gas ram. It's a, a, it's a nitro piston or gas ram in there. But um, the shock of that is actually causing it um, to um, knock it out of alignment. So then your sights are off. So now you got to re-zero your gun. And it's happening every 14 or 15 shots, I have to re-zero it, which is not okay. It's unacceptable. So that's something they need to fix. Um, Black Bunker, if you're watching this, you need to fix your sight. You need to make this sturdier, better. It needs to have clicks in it, not or, or make it snugger. I don't care what you do. Clicks would be preferable where it locks into place would be preferable. But your sight um, is, is, is too loose, and it's knocking itself out. The other thing is, is that this rail that holds your scope, although this plastic is very solid, it's plastic and that can end up being a problem and one thing you know I'm um, talking to Rick and stuff that he noticed is that there's some wobble in that on the one that he has you have two screws here that hold it together and you have two screws there to hold it together but it is plastic depending on where you live how hot it is or how cold it is that could become an issue with your sight staying aligned when you're doing it that needs to be metal so that's something that needs to be upgraded as well um, I haven't had any issues with mine personally and you saw how well it sh shoots, but I do agree with Rick from um, Airgun Web Reviews that that needs to be upgraded because that needs to be one solid thing. It needs to be solid anchored, so this is not going to move at all. That is very important to keep your s scope aligned with your with your rifle because if it's wobbling, it has wobble and wiggle in it, then your shot's going to be placement's going to be off. Um, like I said, I haven't had any issues with it issues with it so far, but if I do, I will let you guys know. Now, the other thing I want to address on this thing. Um, and I said two things, but there's actually three I want to talk about. So um, the third one is, is the trigger. The trigger is this one long pull. It doesn't have a first or second stage in it. And if you pull it too fast, you will definitely throw your shot. I learned through shooting this gun that pulling the trigger slowly, just a nice slow pull like that, gets me the best accuracy there is. But it took a little while to figure that out because it's just one long pull. There really is no secondary um, secondary once you click that off and stuff which is not cock there's no secondary in it it's just it's just a just a straight pull through and that right there um makes it tough to shoot you know i mean it's not hard to shoot the trigger is smooth it's not hard to pull but when you have to pull it so slow for so long and you're trying to hold on target that can make it harder for you to shoot now this gun is very accurate as you guys saw 
I don't have a problem shooting it, but somebody new to the air gun market and stuff buying this gun could have some issues when it comes to that, to getting the accuracy they want out of it, especially if they see how I shot it and they're wanting their gun to be the same. The other thing that I talked to Rick about, and he was talking about, we're going to go back to the site real quick, was that he couldn't even get his dialed in when he was shooting the iron sights. He couldn't get it on paper. So I don't know if that was just a fluke or something with his gun, but this this site right here, there's, there's issues. There's issues, and that's just something you need to know. Um, the gun is super accurate. I'll keep saying that. It is very accurate. I love it. It's a very unique design. This is a um, this is Gen 1, so of course there's going to be some things that they can fix and make better. The gun feels good in the hand. It shoots really good. It's very solid. It feels very well built when it comes to that. The accuracy, they've got the accuracy down. The accuracy with this gun, they've got it down, at least in mind. Mine shoots very accurate, as you guys saw. Um, if they could turn this rail into metal and make it part of this, you know, or at least bolted to it so it doesn't move, that would be great. I mean, mine doesn't shift. Mine's on there nice and snug. I snugged up my stock screws and snugged up, snugged up those screws before I shot it. But And I would make sure you put some Loctite on those. But I think that's going to be something that starts to be an issue because I think those are going to slowly work their way out and cause some looseness. So it's just something I want to point out. I have not had an issue, just telling you. I haven't had an issue, but it's something that you need to look at um, when, you're, when you're looking at this gun. Um, for me, this is labeled a survival rifle. It's supposed to be a survival rifle. So um, the problem with that for me is, is that the fact that I have to put a scope on it now to shoot it because this doesn't work kind of kills that for me because I can't keep it collapsed down. And like I said in the beginning of the video, Collapsing this down won't fit in their little kind of water resistant case that they gave you, which is a super cool case, by the way. And that's kind of how I wanted to store it, is put that case in front of my truck. But now that I have to have a scope on it, I can't do that. And the problem with breaking this down and folding it up and having a scope on it, you can end up knocking around and knocking your scope out of alignment, and then your scope's going to be off, and you don't want to do that. So you guys know as well as I do that when you're throwing your gun in the truck, you want to throw it in a case so it's not getting banged around, so it doesn't knock the alignment of the scope out. So... To me, that kind of null and voids the whole point of the collapsible survival rifle thing because now I have to keep it like this all the time, you know, because I'm not going to collapse it down. I'm not going to break it down now that I got the scope on it. So that's a big negative for me because I wanted to be able to use the iron sights. I wanted to be able to use iron sights in this thing. And I do like this gun. I do enjoy shooting it. I think it's fun. It's very accurate. I guarantee I'm going to take out a bunch of critters with it. I'm going to have a blast with it. But... Those are the three things that I feel that you need to address and I feel that you guys need to know. And now that I've been shooting this for so long and I've gotten to shoot it and, and I've learned a few things, those are the three things I want to let you guys know. So if you're deciding to get this rifle, you need to know that these are three things that could pop up on you um, as far as the things that I feel that need to be improved on the gun. So with that being said, um, I do like the Black Bunker Air Rifle. I think they're in heading in the right direction with doing something very cool. This was a great first um, production run, I think. Um, but I think there's a lot of improvements that need to be made still. So when you talk about, you know, do I recommend this to somebody? Well, that's a tough one for me to say because I like the gun and I shoot a lot of air rifles and I love I love brake barrel air rifles and I like um, the spring and gas piston air rifles over PCP air rifles. And this is such a unique gun and it's super cool looking to me. I just think it's super cool looking that I like it. So if you want a gun that is accurate and will be a great viable small game hunter, I would say yes, this is, this is definitely a gun to get. Um, but... Um, because of the few things like the, the sight thing on, on here and then the rail that I think needs to be metal and that the trigger has such a long thing, if I had to recommend a gun to somebody and say, hey, this is the one you should get, um, if I'm saying, you know, for, you know, just, you know, if you ask me what I would recommend somebody to start out with when it comes to air gunning and stuff, it would be a Virock. It wouldn't be the Black Bunker BME, you know. Um, but as somebody that's already into air gunning that likes to shoot and wants something unique and interesting and, and totally different than anything that's on the market that does shoot well, it seems to be built, built solidly and very well, and hopefully it's going to last. Um, yeah, pick one up. Check it out. I think it's a cool gun. You know, I don't have any regrets picking it up. Um, I can adjust to the things that are going on with it because, as I have, as you guys have seen. So for me... It wasn't a big deal, you know. I actually think I got mine for $269 on Amazon when they first came out. They're $279.99 if you go to Pyramid Air. 
And I think it's a very unique air rifle, and I think that if you're somebody that would like to have something super cool in your collection that's different and unique, yeah, this is a great gun. And it's super accurate, as you guys saw. But, like I said, be prepared for the fact that the sight could end up being an issue with you. Be prepared that this trigger is very long and it's one stage, and then you're going to pull it very slowly to get the best accuracy out of it, at least with my gun. And be prepared for the fact that if you're not checking these screws right here for this rail and making sure they're snugged up and that rail stays tight all the time, you could get some wobble in the rail. And that can throw your shots off. So those are the things that I think you guys need to know. That's what I've learned over, uh, over using it and having it. Um, I will tell you I'm very disappointed that I have to have a scope on it. And that is, that is you know, for me, if that was the case, like I literally bought this hoping not to have a scope on it. So for me, um, it's a big fat negative not being able to use the open sights because the sight won't stay um, um, true when it's zeroed in. And that's a big negative for me. And if that was the case and I would have known that and I known I wasn't going to be able to, to shoot at open sights, I wouldn't have bought this gun, no matter how cool it is. I wouldn't have bought it because I literally bought it so I could keep it shoot at open sights and if you guys go back and watch my videos that i did with the open sights you guys saw how accurate it was with the open sights and that was what i wanted to do it was very accurate after 30 yards of open sights easily take small game don't have to worry about a scope and i was very excited about that and now i have to have it scoped up so that's a big negative for me and because of that you know i wouldn't if that was the case and i knew that i was gonna have to put a scope on it and, and that's how I was going to have to run it. I wouldn't have bought this gun. So um, you guys take that for what it is. That's just, you know, what I've learned. My opinions, my feelings. I'm going to have fun with this gun. I'm going to have a blast with it. I'm going to shoot it. I'm sure you guys are going to see it on some more videos because I am going to have it out on videos and just be shooting it and having fun with it. And I want to do another update on this video a year down the road where you guys can see if this gun's still doing well a year from now because I think that's important to revisit air guns instead of just getting one review and then going on um, to revisit it because if you guys have seen the stuff with my CFX that I got from Gamo, man, whew, go watch those videos because that'll tell you, you know, the difference between one video versus a few weeks later and how fast an air gun can change on you that's not built very well. So anyway, that's all I got for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope this helps. Questions and comments, throw them down below. I will answer them to the best of my ability. I am not affiliated with Black Bunker in any way, shape, or form. So if you guys have issue with your gun or issue with the company and you want to bitch and gripe about the company and everything that they do, please send those messages to them and not to me because I don't work for them. I'm just some guy that likes to shoot air rifles and enjoy making these videos. And I like putting out stuff and I, I like picking up air rifles that I like and I like to show and then I... And, and showcase and shoot and then I put those video out, videos out for you guys to watch so it help you make a decision to see if you actually like that air rifle or not and this one when it came out I thought was super unique unique because it was something new and different I was interested in it so I picked it up and here you guys go you got all these videos so I hope they help you guys and I hope you guys enjoyed it and you guys know what to do you know how it helps the channel and just do yourself a favor get outside enjoy being outdoors and we will see you guys on the next video